Hey everyone, how's it going? Today I wanted to show you how to repair a defective Motorola MA1 wireless Android Auto adapter. This adapter is used in your car if it doesn't support Android Auto wirelessly and it allows you to connect your phone without having to plug in the USB cable to your car every single time. This is a device that I've been using for literally two years now and it recently crapped out on me. And today I'm gonna to show you an easy fix uh, for this device to start working again. Now, before I get into the steps, uh, what you wanna know is how do I know that this device has crapped out to the point where I actually need to disassemble it like so and shove it in my oven literally for six minutes at 200 degrees Celsius or 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the way that this crapped out on me was when I was driving on a road that I've driven by often enough to know that this device keeps on working because I know sometimes the Android Auto wireless loses connection on certain stretches of road for some strange reason. Uh, this is this was not one of those roads. It just lost, it, lost the connection with my phone. I tried to reconnect my phone to no avail. And once I got to the parking lot, I tried to connect multiple times. My phone did pick up the little Bluetooth ID of this device a couple of times, but it would just refuse to connect. So naturally, what I thought to do next was to perform a factory reset to this device. So yeah, there's a little button on the side over here, as you can see on the casing, which connects to the motherboard. And when you hold this device for a couple of seconds, what happens is that this little LED light is gonna start blinking blue on a regular basis, indicating that it's ready to accept pairing from a new device. However, when you hold, keep holding the button down for over 35 seconds, according to the user's manual, what will happen now is that this little LED will go from blinking blue to now white, yellow or white? And then it just stays like a steady white indicating that it's been factory reset. And after uh, you've done so, you can release the button and then press it down again for a moment until it starts blinking blue again and try to connect it to your phone. Now I tried doing all of that and it didn't work. So the next step was obviously to do an internet search to see how to fix the problem. Now, it seems like this device actually craps out uh, on average every one to two years. I've had mine for almost precisely two years now and it's a pretty common occurrence, unfortunately or fortunately. Unfortunately, because this is pretty much the only branded wireless Android Auto device you can find on the market. You know, it's made by Motorola. I don't want to buy a random uh, Chinese brand that, you know, connects to my car, which then connects to my phone, which has all my data on it. I don't want to trust a random brand to not suck out all my data from my phone and transport it to somewhere random in some third world country ready to get resold to someone else. So this is the only big brand that you can find uh, for an, a wireless Android Auto adapter. The good news is that this thing is pretty repairable and it's easily, re easily repairable by anyone uh, from their homes provided you have an oven or an air fryer. Now, what I've done over here is I've actually put the uh, motherboard into the air fryer already. So right now I'm gonna reassemble it. Unfortunately, I didn't think to film a video to disassemble it, but you're gonna be able to see the exact steps uh, in the reverse order of this if you wanna disassemble it. So obviously there's this little connector for the USB over here, uh, which you should actually take off before putting into the air fryer. It's a pretty standard connector to a motherboard. What you do is put your little fingertip over here and you start prying on one side until it comes loose and then you start prying the other side and eventually it kind of pops off like this. Now, to reassemble it, you do the opposite, which is to put it right in and then give it a nice hard shove and it's kind of fixed in there. So to put it in the oven, you want to take off the USB part of it and only put in this part of the board over here. You don't want to roast the crap out of the USB connector and break your device completely. And what you want to do as well is you want to take note of where the wireless uh, antenna is, which is this little gold corner that you see on one side. And this is the side that faces upwards in your oven. There's this other side which lacks any sort of uh, gold accent. This is the part that uh, sits on the bottom of your tray when you shove it into the oven. You want to turn on the oven for about six minutes. I did it for eight just uh, out of precaution and you want to set the temperature to at least 200 degrees Celsius or 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, 
Now, what you want to do next, uh, because I'm reassembling this, uh, the way that you disassemble it is the exact opposite, is you want to re locate um, this little, little stilt over here that hopefully you can see on the camera. Focus, you fuck. Okay. This little stilt over here is where this little bit, this little hole over here should go. So when you put in the motherboard back into the little shell, the goal part actually faces downwards. You don't want to see the goal part when you uh, look at the device from the top. And the little still actually plugs into this alignment you know, hole over here. And that's how you fit it in and that's how you take it off. To take it out, it's a little bit uh, tougher because there's also a little plastic bit where the, the little LED window is, which makes it a little bit tough to um, pull the board out of the shell. As you can see, I'm putting it back in, it's pretty easy. But when you wanna take it back out, what you wanna do is you grab the USB over here, you push it out, and it's gonna give you a little bit of trouble. So what you wanna do is you wanna put your little screwdriver here and start uh, prying it out, and eventually it comes out. So I'm just gonna put this back in. There's three tiny, tiny ass screws, which I'm not sure if you're able to see over here. Uh, there's a tiny, tiny ass screw. Uh, that goes into each of these little holes. If you don't have butter fingers like me, you'll be able to get them in in an efficient manner. And I think taking it out is actually easier. So you, what you wanna do is, once the board is back in, you wanna screw it down and make sure that those screws are all in. So unfortunately, again, I don't rehearse my videos. I don't script my videos. So I'm just gonna do it right in front of you right now and be a little bit patient while I do this. And I'll guide you to probably the toughest or most challenging step of uh, prying open this device in just a second when I put in the, the top cover again. So as you can see, the screws are pretty easy. As long as you have the, a, a nice tiny screwdriver like this, you want like a, like a jeweler's, uh, jeweler's uh, you know, or one of those watch screwdrivers because your typical home, you know, full-sized Phillips screw head screwdriver is probably not gonna fit the heads of these tiny screws or it might fit, but it might kind of wreck the, the head of it, which is what you don't want. So this thing actually fits in pretty snug. It's a pretty solid, robust device when it's working, which is why I like this adapter. And on top of that, I don't want to spend an extra 150 bucks again just to buy a new one. So obviously repairing is the way to go. So now to put this thing back in, um, I want to face the Motorola over here uh, and make sure that the right setup. So the Motorola, uh, faces the you know the, the USB connector and this is this is actually the most challenging part of um, opening this device in my opinion because if you're like me and you have clumsy ass fingers you tend to break shit when you're trying to repair it which is what I did for my ThinkPad a couple of months ago when I was trying to take out the touchpad and I ended up ripping the connector off the goddamn motherboard and having to go buy a new touchpad completely so this is the part where I'm always very cautious, where I always appreciate videos, which is why I'm making this one because I don't see any video out there that shows you how to do it. So there's these little tiny plastic tabs. I know it's hard to see over here, but you can, can kind of see a little hole over here and there's one on each side. And there's these tiny plastic tabs that go into those plastic tabs on the cover uh, on each side of the device over here. So uh, I'm gonna, put this cover back on over here and it's just gonna pop back right in place. I appreciate that there is no glue or any bullshit that uh, is usually involved in a lot of these tiny consumer electronics ranging for your, from your MacBooks to your uh, smart watches and whatnot. So the way that you would actually go about um, opening this is that you would slide a pen knife along the LED side. You can see the LED over here. What you wanna do is you wanna slide your knife in there and just kind of pop it open like this. You can see how there's a small, uh, you know, wedge that's created over here. Um, that's how you start opening it. So you wanna slide the knife along one side and then just kind of pop it out over here. 
I'm not going to do it because I don't want to reopen this device. And then you do the same on the other side and eventually this whole thing should pop right off. And that's how you open the device. Just do the opposite of what I just did to reassemble it and then go pop the motherboard uh, again without the USB section. Disconnect this part beforehand. Put it in for about six minutes. Eight minutes is also fine and roast it at 200 degrees Celsius or 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the, in case you're wondering what to do with the surface or the tray that you, in, in which we, you put in the motherboard, what you want to do uh, is put it, this, this motherboard on a piece of aluminum foil. I put another piece of baking paper right underneath that foil, just out of precaution. And that's how you roll. That's it for today. And I hope you learned something from this video. See you all in the next one. Goodbye. I also should add that if you want to test the, whether the device is working again, I recommend you do so before you reassemble this entire thing. So just stick in the USB to the motherboard and then plug it into literally any USB. You could plug it into one of those dummy USB charging ports in your power strip if you wanted to, just to make sure that the device powers on. And what should happen once this device comes on is you should see the LED uh, I think it flashes green or white, but eventually it starts flashing blue constantly. And that's what tells you that it's ready to accept a phone connection. And that blue light should keep on blinking and blinking and blinking. And that's how you know it works because that's the opposite of it staying red and staying red the entire time. That's it for today.